never scan two. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new MacThaver Scan album two. Blah. These guys are a Swedish rock outfit. This is their second full length LP, obviously, and on this album, they're doing a little bit of a tweak to their sound. Their debut full length was chock full of punk, indie rock, and post-punk influences, hectic guitars and drums, and all of this sonic chaos was sliced through by, by, by the band's very sharp-voiced lead singer, Maya Milner. And Milner's voice still kind of cuts its way through to the front row on this album, but it's not through incredibly distorted guitars. On this LP, the band still has a lot of gutsy punk energy. Just look at the refrain on the opening track on this album, which is essentially, fuck you! But this time, what Milner is sort of singing through on this album is reverb, it's sort of noisy slash jangly guitars, C86 style melodies. The attitude and the distortion is most definitely still there, but it's replaced with the kind of songwriting that influences other modern bands like The Pains of Being Pure at Heart. Now, even though this band is kind of a few years behind the revival of this kind of stuff back around 2009, they still sound really great doing it. And it's nice to kind of hear a group take this kind of rock songwriting, this kind of rock and pop songwriting, and add a bit of noisiness to it, be kind of feisty with it, a lot like some of the older, more noise pop oriented bands in this style used to, like The Shop Assistants or Black Tambourine. Because of the straightforwardness and the melody and just the speed and the energy of this band throughout this album, a lot of tracks on this LP are incredibly catchy. The opener, Antibus, or the song Asleep, which comes right after, which is just as infectious, not so much, fuck you, actually a little bit sweeter. <laughs> A lot of tracks on this LP are kind of the perfect combination of uh, sadness, angstiness, but also an in-your-face attitude, and on top of that, very sharp, blissful melodies that make me kind of want to run outside and spin around in circles, staring up at the sun, not caring, just being free. Unfortunately, a lot of the guitar strumming patterns and chord progressions do play into those jangle pop stereotypes. But for the most part, the band is entertaining and catchy enough to sort of make this quality ignorable. I guess another major issue for me on this LP is is Maya. Even though she sings very well on a lot of these tracks, her transition from being kind of this punk heroine to someone who is really sort of singing some ballads or just some pop tunes on this album, she I guess is a little too overbearing with the sharpness of her voice. This is most definitely the case on songs like Slowly Sinking as well as Something More, but there are some points on this album where I do feel like the band does make some of these pretty songs intentionally ugly. They do bring a uh, an element of gruffness to some of them, like the songs Outshine and No Mercy, which both at certain points on the tracks have guitar leads that toss in all sorts of wonky or just sour notes to kind of just muck up what the song is trying to do musically. And plus the song Drumland, Maya's vocals also sort of reach into her upper register on this track, but they come off way more pleasant, not so much I like that this track in comparison with others on here is kind of a slow jam, has that 60s doo 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 ch, epic drum beat quality to it, heavy guitar chords pounding and ringing out. And there are some points on this album where Maya's abrasive voice does sort of work in her favor when she's singing something really sad or just angry like on the track No Mercy, which I mentioned earlier, where one of the refrains on this track right before the chorus, she's singing, fuck you for fucking me when I was 17. Yeah, I mean, she sounds absolutely oh, pissed on this track. And not only is the song really catchy with its melody and guitar leads, but like I said, it's moments like this where her brashness really sort of pays off. Despite some tracks on here with vocals that I was sort of on the fence with, one of the only songs on here I didn't really care for was the track Distance, which was maybe the most 
overtly punk song on the entire album. And because of it, because it didn't have one of these sort of blissful, twee kind of melodies, it sort of stuck out like a sore thumb and not really in the best way. And I'm not exactly sure if the speed at which the band plays on this track really sort of complements the production choices they made on this album as a whole. For the most part, it complements this twee, jangle, noise pop kind of vibe that they're going for. With all this reverb, in terms of the sound quality of the instruments, it kind of runs thin a lot of times. Plus, I'm not even really a big fan of the lyrics on this particular track. Overall, I did enjoy this LP quite a bit. It's got tunes, it's got personality, it sort of recaptures this older style of rock and pop and, and brings their own kind of angry attitude and, and aggressive flair to it. A lot of solid tracks on this thing. It's a very likable album. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. If you've given it a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And um, yeah, that's it. Mac scan two forever. <laughs> <laughs>